Hey everybody, welcome to Watches with Dennis, and we're doing another Saturday live stream. I am Dennis, obviously, or else I wouldn't have probably named the channel this. And so we've got three news stories that I wanted to go ahead and talk about today um, because I didn't do individual videos on them, but I thought eh, it might be worth a little bit of discussion. It'll be, I think, stronger than last week's Rado topic, at least. Uh, in terms of some updates, so uh, watch-oriented updates, of course. The uh, for the channel, I have the uh, uh, few new videos that, that have come out. So I did the uh, a short video, which is I don't you know I don't know I don't know about that format. <laughs> I don't know about that format. I play with it from time to time. But anyway, a friend of mine who's actually been on the uh, live streams before a few times, uh, Tony, he had a uh, dive watch that uh, was no longer winding properly. He he described it as it was starting to make a funny sound and it was no longer holding a watch. So he brought that over uh, last week and we were recording a, a, a pinball podcast and uh, I opened it up. I, you know, I looked at the, the train of wheels watch looked okay uh so i assumed it was probably a broken mainspring in some capacity because the watch was trying to wind i mean you could you could physically turn the crown um and i couldn't figure out anything else uh wrong with that I put it back together and it was the same issue uh but rather than try and replace the mainspring i don't think i have winders for miyota movements it uses a miyota movement and they wind in the other direction so uh, I thought, well, let's just, I think these Miyota movements are pretty inexpensive. So let's just go to go ahead and order. And it, they were, they were like a branded one was under 50 bucks. So I ordered a Miyota movement uh, and swapped the watch over to the new movement. So I put this little short video up uh, about that. Uh, and hey, Tuna, good morning. Welcome to the live stream. And so that's out there. Uh, went pretty, pretty well. Had a little bit of trouble with the hands. I think the issue was uh, one of the hands had gotten bent because after I shot the video, then I ran it through some tests. Uh, it was it being a little intermittent. And I finally found that the seconds hand and the minute hand would touch, but only on the bottom half of the dial. So that's why I didn't catch it initially. So I just took the hands off, uh, you know, straightened them up or bent them out after and reattached them to the dial. And I've been running it for two days now and it's been keeping time fine. So so that worked out, uh, which is good. I have all this uh, equipment to take apart watches and stuff from the pandemic. So it's kind of nice to actually <laughs> use it for something other than buying uh, cheap broken watches off of eBay and then destroying them even further, which is what most of my experience is. So I did that. And then, of course, I have the, the review video up that I dropped yesterday on the Longa One. So I finally did get that back from servicing, wore it for a week. So now it's I don't have to I was. When I'm getting ready to do a review, I feel obligated to just constantly wear the watch. But it's like, well, I don't want to go out walking, which one of the things I do for exercise and and uh, with a watch with an alligator strap and sweating into it. So it's sort of like it's a little weird to manage that one. And then uh, so other watch stuff. Uh, I did order some new band types. So this is my Orient uh, Cano and I put it on a sailcloth strap. It's a little loose because this was really stiff. I've never had sailcloth before like backed with leather or something and it's a little weird so i thought i wanted to try that out so i ordered a few uh straps from barton bands did that and then yesterday i i got one of the uh these universal attachments on my g-shock to allow you to put 22 millimeter uh lug width straps on it uh, so the way it works is a lot of these g-shocks have a 16 millimeter uh lug to lug excuse me lug width not lug to lug and so they make these metal adapters. This was such a chore. I probably should have shot a video of it, uh, but I'd have run out of space on the on the SD cards. It was such a chore to change out that G. I I finally looked and found a comment like on a on a watch forum or something that said, "Take the case back off of the watch." You know that covers the battery. Um, and then I was because I just could not get those spring bars seated. Like I took the I. Taking off the old uh, straps, that was not that big of a deal. You know, you just use a spring bar tool. I'm going in with my little spring bar tool trying to put the strap. I normally putting straps on is pretty easy, but I've never took, I it was over an hour. It was, it was probably closer to two. Um, and then taking the back off, it, they went right in. But then I had to try and get the wiggle the back into the watch. So anyway, switching back to the, to the default stuff was going to probably be a little, 
actually switching that back probably wouldn't be too bad because once i get the case back I, I think i could pop the spring bars off without uh taking the case back off and in which case after that it should be pretty easy but uh and hey koji good morning welcome to the live stream but anyway, so those are the, the watch activities I've been doing. So we're going to go ahead and get started. But of course, I have to, have, to do my, have to do my branding plug. So as a reminder, for those of you who might be interested in, we do have a 99 cent club. It's called, because I have, you know, creative naming, watches with Dennis, very creative. 99 cent club, very creative name. So anyway, it's 99 cents a month. That's a whole cent less than Dollar Shave Club. Assuming Dollar Shave Club is actually a dollar. I don't know if it is or isn't. I just buy double-edged blades and use a conventional safety razor which is uh cheaper than dollar shave club so uh if you want to be cheap go back go get a nice razor and then go buy uh double-edged blades plenty of them on amazon uh but anyway so there's that there's emojis i someone joined up to another so i actually can add another uh, uh yeah emoji i always want to say emote so that's not right um so I guess I can add a new emoji. I don't know what to add. I'm thinking maybe my little clown with the bricks from when I did my brick watch video, just because he's kind of fun. Uh, but I stole the crown from, well, I think it was, it was an open source place. Though. But I added the bricks to his hand. I'll have to see if I have a good quality version of that or not. I don't know. I don't do a lot of, uh, of um, emoji creation. It's not really my forte. I don't know if I have a forte with watches, but we're going to pretend that I do. So... Three topics today. I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. Uh, Hodinkee article, obviously, linked. And all of the articles, I'm going to use three of them uh, to have our conversations today. And they are all in the uh, the show notes. I realized I had four tabs open because I was researching something on Oris, but we'll get to that in a bit. So we're going to start with this one. So this is the RWC uh, Mark 20. This is the new silver dial iteration. This is not a limited edition watch. However, it's been released uh, because IWC is celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Mark Pilot watch. So, anyway, uh, I saw this art. You know, I saw this article on on uh, at Hodinkee, and I thought, okay, well, this is a pretty popular watch uh, line. Like the Pilot watches are probably, my understanding is, the most popular set, uh, followed by the Portuguese line. So IWC has two kind of big hit lines, and maybe the Igenur. And Igenur will be eventually. I don't know what the price point they launched the new one at. If that's really possible, but people like how it looks. But regardless, when all, you say IWC with a lot of people, myself included, you think Pilot Watch. So this is for those that aren't familiar. This is a it's a forty millimeter watch. It's a little under uh, eleven millimeters thick, uh, hundred meters of water resistance. There's nothing new other than the dial in terms of the like the specifications of the watch. It's just got the silver dial now. This very much follows that Type A Flieger format, um, and so here's a here's a good shot of it, so you all can can see. It does seem to have kind of that frosted silver look, which I do like. Uh, I mean, that's kind of like the dial approach that the Longa One I reviewed does. It's it's a silver dial. When I first saw that watch, the, the Longa, I actually thought it was a white dial, and I wasn't interested. And then I finally found some videos where people had shown it in other light, and I realized it was silver, not white, and that changed my opinion because I don't like. I don't like, I like white dials, but I don't know if that works so well with rose gold. But back to this, this sort of format is more of a silver. It kind of looks white on my screen, but it is more of a silver, which I think works a little bit better, a little more dynamic. Um, I don't like the date. Uh, I get it because they're selling to, uh, they're selling to a lot of people that are going to be less concerned with the, like the perfect symmetry and all of that. My issue with the date on this isn't that I'm anti date window. It's more that when you're doing kind of this type A Flieger format and, uh, and Laco and Stova do this as well. They didn't come with dates originally. So I kind of, I get it from like a modernization perspective. And I own a Stova Flieger, a type B, but, uh, and Stova has made a lot of changes to the case shape and stuff. Like it's easier. It's not as straight lug, so it's easier to it rests better on the wrist and such for a lot of people. Whereas Laco has stayed more pure. But both brands and, uh, offer like date and no date versions of their Flieger watches because some people really want the date and some people would rather have this more authenticity. This doesn't have an option. So long story short, that's probably the biggest negative to this, but I mean, it's a really, I'm not a huge type A Flieger fan. I think it's a really nice, clean look. And I know it appeals to a lot of people, not my personal favorite, which is why I own type B, but here are the specifications. So it is loomed 
uh, which it would be expected with a Fleeker style pilot watch, uh, regardless. Uh, pricing on this, I don't think is really weird for what, yeah, okay, so 6150 on on the bracelet, and then it's 5250 on leather. The only thing that surprised me was that it's $900 difference to get the bracelet upgrade. This is one of those brands where, where it just, for whatever reason, they add a lot on the, like some companies, uh, the delta between strap and bracelet is a few hundred, but this is basically a thousand, which that did surprise me. Now this, uh, there's something about this bracelet. I'm not, I've never handled one of these bracelets before. So uh, I'm trying to see, I think that was covered in the article uh, because they kind of, kind of went over all that all that fun stuff uh but maybe i'm i'm mistaken i thought they uh had some sort of format on it that a lot of people are are fans of trying to skim it really quick uh oh anti-reflective sapphire crystal hopefully just on the inside iwc used to put it on the outside uh, i had a watch that was inside and outside and you could see the scratches in the anti-reflective i i don't know why anyone would do that and omega still i think does which is Really, I get it. It looks great in photos, but but why would you why would you do it? Uh, the, obviously, if you like Fleeker style watches, you can get in a lot cheaper than five thousand dollars. So this is this is not cheap. But IWC has always been that way. Uh, IWC's pilot watches are like Fleeker style pilot watches. As far back as I can recall, were always over four thousand new. So and this does have their uh, their IWC thirty uh, two one 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 movement. So that's like the one hundred twenty power hour power reserve, which is pretty chunky. Whereas you know most of them like if you're looking at Fleekers in the one to two thousand dollar price point from Waco, for example, you're going to get an Eta or Salita style. Uh, so you're going to have like thirty eight hour power reserves. So if the power reserve is important to you, then you know I could see that. Uh, if the bracelet's super comfortable. Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot more Zenith's kind of like that too. I've noticed with some of their watches, the bracelets and they don't, their bracelets aren't good or so I've heard, or at least the clasps. A lot of people complain that Zenith's clasps feel cheap though. I've heard they've made some recent improvements on some of their defy stuff with like their ladder bra bracelets, but Koji notes in the chat looks nice on the bracelet, but almost a thousand more. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I, it's, it's one of those things where and maybe these will sell fine no matter what, because these aren't limited. But uh, in my mind, it's like, I'm more forgiving if they want to say, like, if you were to go to the IWC dealer, like a boutique, and buy the bracelet separate, and they say it's $1,000 for the bracelet or 900 in this case, I, I, that wouldn't shock me. But making that markup be there on the watch acquisition seems weird to me. A lot of times, a lot of companies will have the delta lower if you buy it with a watch. That's why the recommendation often you'll hear online from people is if you don't know, especially if you, especially if you don't know or you think you're going to resell it, just uh, buy it on, always buy it on the bracelet because you can always get a third-party leather strap or NATO or silicone or sailcloth or whatever you want and find a really nice one. And and if you don't care about the branding, I mean, some some brands have very popular alternative options like omega's rubber straps are extremely praised uh but it's also cheaper to go and buy their branded a rubber strap than it would be to buy their bracelet so a lot of times it's like get the watch on the bracelet and then go and buy the alternative strap so that's kind of what i'm thinking here uh is weird but i would if i were buying this i would probably buy it on the bracelet uh just that's i i generally try and do that if that's an option unless like, you know, like if gray market, the bracelet watch went down 200 bucks and the strap one went down 800, I might at that point, because it's already a $900 spread, you know, you add that further gap, I might be like, you know what, leather's fine or or whatever they used here. Yeah, I think it was leather. So uh, tuna notes, the date really does kind of spoil the effect. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, but it's practical. I mean, that's one of those, that's one of those where we nerd out as watch collectors and say, oh, we really don't like dates because unless you put it like at the six or the 12, which who puts the date at the 12, but, but you put it somewhere where it kind of can maintain symmetry. Otherwise everyone's like, well, it throws off the balance of the dial and it always takes up space no matter what you do. But that being said, uh, the market has spoken and people buy date 
feature watches far more than they do no date. So uh, I sympathize because IWC is probably just saying, you know what, we're really trying to sell this to people after a luxury watch who likes a really clean, easy to read Arabic numeral dial. You get that in spades with uh, the Mark 20. I've heard great things about the Mark 20. A lot of people really love it. Uh, you know, just me personally, I would be looking at Laco Stova for this store, sort of style. You could choose date or no date. You'd give up the tremendous power reserve. Uh, you're not going to have an in-house movement, but it's going to it's gonna look good and they're well made. And you can still get that. Like Laco will offer you options with like Miyota movements in them, but you can still, if you're willing to go up between the one to $2,000 price point, you can get Swiss movements in those granted German watches, but Anyway, but that's just my take on it. So anyway, I, I saw that one uh, last night, so I wanted to include that in a discussion. Uh, so let's jump to Seiko. So now let's move to the least expensive watch set that I wanted to talk about of our, our three things. This time we're going to pull again. The links are in the uh, description of the video, so you can always go and read up on these. Uh, this one will be from a blog to watch. This I almost did a video on. These are the new Peanuts watches. Uh, they're Seiko 5s. So I think most of the people watching this are probably familiar, but if you're not, Seiko, they run the gambit at this point in terms of pricing. They have some extremely expensive watch. And I'm not talking Grand Seiko, which is kind of its, it's spun off. It's its own, it's owned by the conglomerate Seiko, but it's its own company at this point. But Seiko proper, uh, you know, King Seiko watches at, that are over 3000 US dollars all the way down to the Seiko 5 line, which... You can readily find Seiko 5s uh, around one to 200. I'm not saying direct from Seiko, but at least gray, like go on Amazon even. Probably find some of the older ones that way. But anyway, so the reason I didn't do a video on these and we're going to talk about it here is they're limited. And I'm kind of I'm kind of getting to the point where it's like, I don't want to do a standalone pre-recorded video uh, for a watch that maybe you can't get. Though, quite frankly, they're making so many of these, I probably could have gotten away with doing a standalone on it but anyway there are two of them so this is a 55th anniversary for peanuts of the comic strip charles schultz a uh, very very famous at least in the u.s um kind of one of those uh inoffensive brands like there's no one that i know of that just like hates peanuts for example uh but there are plenty of people at this point that probably don't remember reading these comics like i still remember when they were in the newspaper but a lot of people uh, charles schultz has been dead for a number of years at this point so I don't know. Um, it's just one of those things that kind of endures. So they have two versions of this. And I think if we go to the end, we can we can look more closely at some of the photos, which is the interesting aspect. Now, the pricing on these is around 400 bucks. This version with the uh, with the Snoopy ears helicopter thing, chop, 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 chop. I think that's 400. And I think the other one uh, on the strap with him in the surfboard is 425. So and I see Tune has noted Seiko and their limited editions, which yes, the the joke the joke continues. Seiko can't help themselves. And actually, before we go into the pic, uh, photos, let's talk a little bit about that because hmm. they have a summary here at the end of it. So all right, so eighty nine hundred examples of the one with the surfboard, which as I noted is four hundred and twenty five dollars, and then they they don't. I like a blog to watch a lot, but I wish their summary information was more like Hodinkee, where it's a little easier to highlight and because I want it all for discussion video purposes. All right. So that's the dive style one. And the one I just showed you with the Snoopy ears as the helicopter thing. That's the that's the field watch one. That's the SRPK27. That one is actually fewer, but it's still 6,500 units. But it's actually the cheaper watch at $400. Now we're talking a delta of $25. So I don't think most people really care all that much. If you can, I don't usually like to do the, the whole, you know, if you can afford $5,000, you can afford $6,000. I, I hate that argument. But I will go ahead and say is if you can afford $400, you can afford $425. But um, I'm willing to go out on a limit and claim that one. So these both use the same movement, 4R36, the standard, uh, well-respected uh, workhorse movement out of Seiko. But yeah, it's the joke that Tuna noted is yeah, it's limited. And this is where I, I read that it was limited and I didn't even go down and read how many. I was just like, I'm not going to do a video on it. Well, I'll save it for a live stream. And then when I was reading the article in depth this morning to prep. I realized that we were talking the two units combined were, were like uh, like almost 15,000 watches. And I was like, OK, we're, we're probably no one's going to be hurting and hunting to find this thing. 
Uh, in fact, I won't be surprised if this ends up gray uh, with this many uh, units being made. I, but I just don't know how popular they are. But anyway, so this is the Field Watch one, the $400 one, the more limited one. So you got Snoopy over here at the nine o'clock position. He's uh, this was something that was that he could do sometimes in the in the strips. Or if you saw the cartoons, like he could like helicopter with his units. So that's him flying around. Um, these jump all over. And then the surf one. Here's the thing with the case that it comes in, where it's like explaining why he's surfing. Because I've never seen Snoopy surfing. Like I don't remember ever reading him surfing a strip. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. There were a lot of strips that predated me. And I didn't read them every Sunday. Um, but here's a here's a, a a better view of it. So he's there. It says Seiko 5 on the, for those of you who like on phones and stuff, can't read what the surfboard says. Surfboard says Seiko 5 Sports. Uh, so he's sort of hiding behind the surfboard. Uh, I do like this. Uh, you know, I do like the shape quite a bit. Whereas you've got the crown here uh, on the field watch at the three o'clock position. This does more of their, almost their turtle, what I think of as their turtle approach with the, more four o'clock position ish on the uh on the crown which i do have a i do have a seiko prospects uh turtle dive watch and i really do like that configuration and uh tuna does note that peanuts was popular worldwide okay i was i just wasn't sure if it if it was or if it was or wasn't so it, it gets to be one of those things where it's like is that a u.s thing or or was it like a big deal everywhere okay so so good to know. Uh, would make sense. Maybe that's why we needed to have fifteen thousand watches across these two uh, SKUs. Uh, they did actually. Uh, I, I know people complain that Seiko doesn't sign the crowns a lot on watches. Uh, here they sign. Both of them do the same signing. It's the it's Snoopy's uh, paw print. So, or is, or is it a random dog's paw print? No, it's got to be Snoopy, right? Come on, it's Snoopy. It's got to be Snoopy. Uh, Koji notes that uh, uh, Peanuts is popular in Japan. And Tuna says, did Timex also do a special Peanuts edition? Yes, or at least Timex. And I, that's what I was going to whine about. So <sighs> Peanuts, would Charles have done this? Would he have let every brand do Peanuts watches? Because So yes, Timex, the Timex Marlin, there are tons of them with Snoopy and Woodstock and other Peanuts characters, but particularly those two, because they're the most adorable ones. Yeah, that Timex does Peanuts stuff all the time. I... I don't know for sure if it's all, if it's I'm guessing they've done special edition. They have done additions with them. I don't I don't know if they're limited or not. I would have figured some of them probably are, but I think there are still some in the uh and I'm gonna load it up if you hear me type in the background, uh Timex's website, because that's the brand I always think of with peanuts. I hadn't been I mean Seiko may very well have done other one. I, I Seiko does so many watches that it would not in any way uh surprise me but let's uh let me let me go ahead and screen share here so here we go no we don't need 15 percent off look we are so seiko does surfboards and uh and timex does skateboards question mark like but i mean they do a lot of peanut stuff like look at this so there's snoopy graduating upside down and somehow his hat is flying it should be never mind we're not going to judge the decisions that Snoopy has made on this dial, but let's see Timex standard, uh, 40 millimeter watch, $109. Uh, you know, is it, is it a quartz? Uh, I'm not sure. Do I, why are we talking about this? Because it came up. So yes, quartz analog. So some of the, some of these are, are going to, I think are mechanical. Some are not, but you can see there's just, there's just a, a huge assort assortment of like here's a $68 one with Snoopy holding Woodstock and just flowers are exploding everywhere. It's very violent. I don't know if I would buy that one because of the violence. Um I <laughs> I wish I hadn't looked. <laughs> Apparently there's a Thanksgiving one <laughs> of all the holidays. Of all the holidays to, to celebrate with a watch. I've never thought about getting the pilgrim watch with a pumpkin pie uh, but i guess if like thanksgiving's your i mean don't get me wrong i really like thanksgiving because i like to eat but but i i don't know about this being like the the uh the watch to go for like just i i know people who decorate their houses for halloween and and christmas and maybe even easter 
Um, but like, uh, and 4th of July, uh, Independence Day in the US, uh, but but Thanksgiving, I mean, we might have gotten out some fake like paper turkey things growing up or something, but we didn't get out the we didn't get out the Timex uh, Thanksgiving watches. So um, so this is one I've seen a lot of the Snoopy like playing baseball. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, back to Tuna's question about about Timex doing peanuts watches. They do peanuts all the time, all the time, constantly. So that Seiko's done it here. Uh, yeah, that threw me for a bit of a curveball. And uh, hey, good morning, F. Welcome to the live stream. We are talking about some watches that have been revealed this week. And we were on the uh, we were on the Seiko uh, special limited edition, you know, like uh, six thousand to eight thousand unit peanut watches, which are two of them. So the dive watch is the less limited one, but the, but is the more expensive. And then the field watch is the more limited one. This is the back of the field watch. You've got Woodstock is uh, he's like a little paratrooper. I, I'm glad he's got his helmet on. A little five on the uh, parachute because it's Seiko five. Don't forget it's a limited edition. It's over six thousand units. It's limited edition. So bye 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 now, I guess. Um, here's the back of the dive watch. Uh, it comes on a NATO, so normally you wouldn't really be able to see it very well, but Snoopy on the actually on the surfboard. So I'm glad it is water resistant to 10 bar though, because it would be weird to surf in like a three bar watch. I don't I wouldn't recommend it. But anyway, so yeah, this was uh this one was was interesting. Two in his notes, he uh he likes the digital. I'm assuming that. We're talking the digital Timexes for uh, peanut celebrations. Koji asks whether the how much the regular Seiko field watches are. You know what? I uh, I don't remember it. I don't know if there's like a, a standard uh, Seiko five price for non branded stuff. I always think more about a hundred dollars less ish. But let's let's hop to the Seiko Corporation's website and see what they say because some of the pricing I might be thinking of is stuff that's like. Uh, on Amazon, for example. I don't know if that's necessarily the MSRP. So we were going to like uh, the sports style. Yeah, so about $100 less, right? Because these are uh, the, the these new peanut limited editions are $400 for the field, $425 for the dive. And so here we're seeing $325 on bracelets, $300 ish, $295 for, for like a standard field. Like this is $295. So, I mean, yeah, it's about a hundred dollars more for for these Seikos, and yeah, so four twenty five for a limited seems a bit steep. It, I mean, when you think about it as essentially how much of a percentage markup it is, yes, it is, and the fact that as we noted, eighty nine hundred dive style, sixty five hundred field style, that's not particularly limited either, though that's been true for like all the Seiko fives, right? Like I remember when the street fighter five collection came out because, uh, you know, I play, I didn't play street fighter five cause I only own an Xbox, but, but, uh, I played street fighter two a lot in college. So I saw those and they were themed around characters that were in both games. So I was kind of like, Oh, those are cool. I saw how many they were making. I thought, Oh, well, it's interesting that they're limiting these given how many that was before I was really, uh, collecting a lot. And I didn't, I didn't know the game that Seiko liked to play at the time. I was pretty ignorant of the of the real world i was in my little bubble i didn't understand how things work so uh tuna notes that older style psycho fives go for around 100 i've definitely seen a, a if you if you just want a psycho five and you're not coming in and with a particular dial in mind uh just do some searches for psycho five and you can find stuff around 100 so it's kind of interesting because things like like this watch uh, this is the orient can know uh, on bracelet uh, retail from Orient at around 200. You can find these things though for like closer to the 150, 180 range new. Um, but you know Seiko. So a lot of people, because a lot of people say, well, well, Orient is now the budget option within the Seiko conglomerate, uh, which is true. But if you don't have a particular Seiko five in mind, you can readily find unworn uh, uh, Seiko fives for less than a lot of what the Orient sells. It just depends what you're what you're after. But um, so anyway, so that one, I think, was was sort of interesting, not interesting enough for me to to do a standalone video on. I probably could have, though, as many as they made. Uh, and that's going to bring me to the to the last of the news item watches I want to talk about. Hmm. 
which is another limited edition. This one is, is, is far more limited, but the price point is also far higher. And this is going to be Aorus. So Aorus launched a new uh, Aquas watch and it's limited to 250 pieces and it's very, very purple. So this is their whole Holstein, Holstein edition. I guess every year I, I, I'm not super, I've read about a couple of the other ones before, but so Aorus, I believe every year releases a Holstein edition that kind of like celebrates their the city they're based in or something. I don't know. What they do with it is has been radically different like every time. Like they did a bronze one uh, at one point. And, and so we've got the Aquas watch, which I really like the Aquas dive watch. Like I like the look of it. Like I like the handset and stuff that, that comes on it. Uh, okay, they did a pointer date watch. I see this. There's a link to it at one point. That's what I was kind of kind of researching beforehand. This um, so like the way it looks is interesting. Now, purple is going to be really polarizing, I think, for a lot of people. And actually, that would be why I wouldn't buy this watch because I didn't go to K State. If I was a K State graduate, I would. But their color is purple. Um, this would be a great watch, but it's sort of the red. Actually, back when I remember seeing the red grapes, if you ever saw the red grape uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetuals, they were the prior iteration before they made the new Stella style dials. Um, they ran the the red grapes were like 2015 to 2020-ish. Uh, it was sort of like this. And I didn't get it either because, again, I, I was like, it's a little too K-State for me. But um, because otherwise, I'm not sure how well, like purple is not a color that's evergreen. <laughs> Pun quasi intended the green reference uh but yeah like what scotty here says it's uh barney purple right so you have to you have to get you have to get really into you either have to love purple or you gotta have like some collegiate tie to it in my in my opinion to want to rock a purple watch um all the time as it's in koji said yeah the ema ema watch yes i mean i you know i did i was ku so and for those that that don't know yeah, I was I was KU for I'm not wearing I'm wearing my a podcast shirt today, but I was KU for undergrad and I went to Syracuse in New York for my graduate degree. So, uh, you know, so I'll wear orange uh, and KU because uh, no one cares about this, but I'm going to say it anyway. So KU is red and, and blue, like crimson and, and like navy blue. So which are but those are like popular, like navy blue is popular on everything. So that's it's always easy to wear KU stuff. Um, KU people are also less zealots. Zealot, they're not quite the zealots that EMA uh K State people are in Kansas, at least. Like, even though they turn out more graduates at KU, K State has more personalized license plates. Like the government released the numbers of the specialty K State plates, and there are more of them. They're just they're just more hardcore. It's um, this is how it is. So so anyway, um, yeah, so when I see watches like this, I'm like, all right, well, there are certain schools, and not just not just in Kansas. There are certain other schools in the United States that do a purple, and like, this is a watch that would appeal to them. Now, I think the color integration looks really good, like with the hands and the and the silver uh, the silver framing of the indices and the and and on the hands, of course, as I was saying, but also this like taupe. I think they listed this as gray, but this reminds me very much of the taupe. Uh, bezel insert on that uh silver the sterling silver i don't remember if it was actually sterling but the silver uh case uh tudor the tudor black bay 58 and silver which i really like it has like the same color insert though in the case of the tudor i think it's aluminum and this is ceramic so like i like the look of this watch i would i would never buy this as purple as it is um so I see, see Koji's praising me and, and my tastes. So yes, no, the dial configuration. I like the Aquas's a lot. Like I like the, you know, I recently bought that Pro Pilot X uh, because I like those dials too. Uh, yeah, this actually, it's, it's fairly wearable. Um, it's not 36 millimeter enough. It's actually bigger than that. It's, uh, where do they have that? See, I scroll down because Hodinkee always puts the specs at the bottom. This I think is like around 40, 40 and a half. 41.5. Okay. I was wrong. It's bigger. It's even bigger. No, it's, this is not a small watch. This is uh this is pretty typical, pretty typical dive watch uh, configuration. Uh, as they, at least whoever wrote this article for who, who wrote this, do we know? All right. Mike, Mike Rozak with a, a blog to watch said, 
found it wearable despite being 41.5, but it is 41.5. Uh, Scotty Pinball says my next watch is the Tudor Silver. I actually went to the AD and and tried it out, and I've been I've thought about it multiple times about going back and buying it. the The only reason I don't, well, there are many. All right, there's not an only reason because there's multiple reasons. So the reasons I don't, um, now I'm gonna, I'll shrink this out uh, since we're not talking about the Oris right now. Uh, my only issues with the with the Silver Fifty Eight are um, one, it doesn't come on a bracelet, which at the price point, I kind of want one with a bracelet. And that was one of my issues with, I had a Tudor Black Bay bronze, not the 58, the old ones. Um, and, and they were the same way. They came on a NATO or you could get them on leather. And the NATO looks cool on the, on the Tudor. I did not, they didn't have it at the, on the NATO when I tried it on, they had it on the leather strap. Um, and then the other thing is the, is the transparent case back. So I, that movement is not pretty. It's so Spartan. It's like looking at a Miyota. So I just don't understand why. Well, I do understand why they they uh, transparent case backed it. It was so they didn't have to pay for more silver, and that kind of pisses me off. So anyway, uh, I'm still though. That's not the part that people see. And so looking at the case, and I, I've seen you know photos of it as it's patinaed. And just like the bronze, like Tudor's got the formula down to make them patina. Like they just get darker. They don't. And silver already wasn't like bronze. It didn't get like green. So it look it looks nice. Uh, and with that taupe insert, it's like it's pretty cool. And I love I love silver. Like I love silver dials. I'm not just the metal. I just mean the color. Like silver and gray and just lo- those like neutral, boring colors are really appealing to me. So I thought, you know what? I'm whatever. I don't I don't care enough about the case back on it. If I were to get it, I would probably get it on the on the NATO if I could. Just because I've heard such good things, I've not been able to handle the Tudor Natos. But kind of like uh, Omega and their rubber straps, Tudor's Natos are really like whatever. Like they have some like French company that makes them or something. Supposedly they're really they like I feel really nice. So I can get leather uh, anywhere. Uh, or what I would probably do is I'd buy it. On, so I'd buy it on the Nato, and then I would probably uh, get some silicon straps from like Barton or something. Uh, because generally speaking, I like have a Moral's not the right word, but I have a conceptual objection to dive watches on leather. So what I would do is I've generally found I really like silicon bands on dive watches. So I just get some silicons third party and then I'd get the NATO from from Tudor. That would be my strategy. But um, and as noted, I don't I won't feel as bad about the movement and the Spartan uh, decoration as in there is no decoration uh, if it was covered up and the NATO would cover it up. Um, and so see, I didn't have uh, any, and, and Neff, you weren't on at the start, so you don't know this is a secret, but so I didn't have any sail cloth until I got some, uh, again from Barton, uh, cause I like their pricing. So I'll, I'll use them to try out a lot of watch bands. I bought this, uh, sail cloth strap, um, uh, put it on my, uh, my Orient Cano this morning because I'd never worn sail cloth. And I've been like, I've been curious about like Blanc Pond does their, uh, 50 fathoms. Uh, some of them are on sale cloth, like their bathy scaps. Uh, they, they have that as an option and I've heard good things. Um, this, I, I don't know yet. It was really stiff. So of course I had to like just accordion it a bit, um, to, because it's like backed with leather. Uh, so I was curious just to see how sale cloth is. Cause I just don't have experience with it, but, uh, silicone, uh, so far has been my favorite strap material for, for watches in general. Like, I usually wear watches on bracelet, but if we're thinking about like comfort, um, silicon has been something that's just resonated really well with me. Um, and uh, Koji says, has anyone seen the Tudor Black Bay 925 the silver that they've been out for a while? How much it patinas or tarnishes? Uh, not in not handling wise. I haven't like not in the metal. Uh I've seen some people post photos or maybe some, maybe it was some video. I thought it was photo. Like, I think I've seen some, someone submit some stuff either. I can't remember if it was a watch forum or if it was an article. Um, but it looked like it just kind of got darker, kind of like the Tudor bronze just kind of gets like blacker, uh, but just like, it just looks aged. It didn't look weird to me though. So I liked it. I liked how it kind of looked, but uh, cause I like that aged bronze style. Like I never, when I had my, I, I got rid of my bronze watch to get my, my longa, but but uh, I never cleaned it. I, I, I cleaned it. I never uh, removed the patina. 
um, because I was, I liked how it aged. I didn't want it to look like gold. That, to me, that wasn't the point of bronze. Just like, I don't want silver to look like steel. That's not the, the point of it, but it does have a different warmth to it anyway, um, regardless. So back to the Oris, uh, let me go ahead and, and throw this back up with a, a, a picture, which, cause I noticed Neff noted, yeah, he thought they would, with the purple that they would skew more to the female audience, but they didn't make it a small kind of unisex size, right? 41.5 millimeters is the size of this watch. So um, the back of it, uh, close case back, which is great with dive watches. I'm fine with that. Uh, I don't know why they put an adorable bear on it uh, with a, he seems to be wearing like a sweater, which I'm not sure I would dive with a sweater on, but I mean, I guess if the water's really cold and you can't afford a wetsuit, you would maybe think, well, you wouldn't be thinking if you thought a sweater would stay warm with you in the water. But but here's like a close-up of it. I don't know why it's everything's so tinged blue and a purple. They must be shining with purple light on it. But you get a better look at the bear. Um, but he's on the back, so who cares about him? Um, now the price point on this, as I know, this was more limited than the uh, than the Peanuts Snoopy themed uh, Seiko fives we just talked about, which were very very unlimited. Like like combined together, I think they were over fifteen thousand units. This is two hundred and fifty. Hmm. But this is not cheap. This is forty three hundred U.S. dollars. This is the most expensive Aquas I have ever seen. And it's not even close. And in fact, I think this article, yeah, no, right here actually, notes that this is, so it uses the Caliber 400. Caliber 400 is an awesome movement. I love the Caliber 400. But the Caliber 400, which they launched like uh, three years ago, that came out on bracelet at $3,300 when it was first added to the Aquas line, okay? so. A thousand dollars less, and you go, okay, well, but this is limited, right? Okay, I get that. But last year, Oris did their uh Aquas, uh, whatever this is, what is this? The Payoon, I don't know anything about the Payoon, but it was caliber 400, 43.5 millimeters, so it was less wearable, yes, but it was $3,600. This one, you remember the green one? This one, $3,600, same movement. Now, this is the first time that they've pulled the date. So that's part of the reason why I think a lot of people are kind of going to like this because it looks really clean, right? This no date, but it's purple. I think that's even more extreme than this green. Uh, like, I think this is even less popular because of the purple, the purpleiness. It's 2K state, guys. I love the insert. But this insert was cool too. This you didn't, just didn't have a color match date window, which Oris often doesn't color match their date window. Frustration of mine with the pro pilots. Uh, which is why I went with one with a black uh, black insert on a on a dial that was gray. I thought it at least worked. Uh, but this thing at 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 forty two or forty three hundred dollars. Holy cow! I just it's it's so much. Uh, I I just I don't know. I don't know who would who. I think they'll sell out because it's only two hundred and fifty of them and. And it looks nice. So if you can get behind purple, even though it's not going to be an evergreen dial design, um, it's still a really clean pull, you know, attractive execution. Uh, I love the no date option. I, I love dive watches without dates. Um, a bracelet looks great. Uh, Aquas has always looked good to me, but it's just, it's a lot. Of my, it's a lot for an Oris. It's a lot for an Oris with an in-house. So Tuna noted, uh, yeah. I mean that obviously I think you could probably tell I, I'm I'm finding this difficult to swallow at this point. I get even limited, it's still like 700 more than their last limited uh that they did. That was a, also an aquas. Um Neff notes his aquas was 1600 new. Yeah. I, and I I I understand the price spike with doing the caliber 400. I understand moving from from which side was okay. So it makes more sense if I do it from over here. It feels off. It's opposite for me. So I'm trying for the camera. Ibosh movement. Okay. I get it. Cause the Aquas line, like you can get Aquas that were, I don't remember what they were using. Were they using Salitas or Edas? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're using a third party movement. Okay. Fine. You get under $2,000 price point. So then you say, we're going to move to having our own in house movement. Do we care if it's in house or not? I don't know. A lot of people do. 
Some people don't. But you did have like a lot more impressive power reserve for the caliber 400. Plus, you do have the 10 year warranty on the watch and the movement. And that's true for this uh, this one here. So so you go, OK, we get the longer uh, service interval and all of that. So we launch three years ago, thirty three hundred dollars. Steep increase, but you're like recouping R&D economy of scale. Da, 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 da. Then you do the caliber 400 in a limited edition, move it a little bit more, say, all right, that's not, but that wasn't, that was $300 more, 33 to $3,600. And now you say it's $4,300 for a no, like no, it's just a three hander. And I love the cleanness of that, but it's a no date. It should be cheaper. Rolex charges less for their no dates than their dates on their subs. And stuff. It's just because it's a less complicated watch. We often don't treat uh, date dates as a complication, but it is a complication. Um, so, uh, but it's the same movement. So, like, why is it more? Like, they've already dumped all their R. Like, the R and D costs are already sunk, right? At this point, they're just getting cute. Um, so, I, I just, I, I just don't. Uh, other than it being limited and people wanting this color scheme or desperate, like they love Oris and they just, they've never bought an, an Aquas because they can't get behind having a date at all. And they like put the dates at the 12. It's like a clean or a six, excuse me. That would be weird. Um, it's a, it's a clean, it's a clean configuration, even with date usually. So uh, yeah, that's, it's so close to something like the larger, the, the, like the original Pelagos line that I, you're in, you're in, not rarefied air, but you're it's there's a lot of competition for your dollar at this point. It's to I mean, I would be out just because of the of the dial color, but I love the rest of it. I love the no dateness of it. I love the taupe gray uh ceramic bezel insert, but I don't know who who I mean there's some people that won't like the Pelagos for some reason, but I mean that's a titanium watch, so it's like you're you're getting a quote unquote superior metal. I mean, it's lighter at least. So some people are going to prefer steel, but I, yeah, I just don't, doesn't work for me, but I wanted to talk about it because I thought it was interesting. Um, tuna is allergic to wool. Okay. Interesting. I, uh, I, for at my old job at one stage, I kind of went through a, a sweater phase. I don't know. I would, I just, I wore a lot of, I didn't want to keep wearing dress shirts because I wasn't wearing ties all the time. And uh, so like in the winter, I just started wearing a lot of sweaters. Like I bet I'd wear a t-shirt under them. Um, but yeah, wool is not, that must be very, well, maybe if you don't have to wear suits a lot or at all, then I guess wool's pretty easy to avoid. I actually like wool socks though, like, uh, cause they wick uh, sweat away so easily. So, um, and I have a wool blanket for like, in the living room because I always like a blanket, but I don't do a lot of wool other than the sock thing. It would be, and I could go back to cotton socks. It would be, but so that would not be the worst allergy. That's an avoidable one. Like if I was allergic to cotton, it would be a challenge. Life would be a challenge. But anyway, those are the three, uh, those are the three watch uh, topics I wanted to discuss. So just as a, as a reminder for those that, that came in late, we, uh, we talked a little bit. Oh, I can, I can, I, I still have all the screens up. We talked at first about the IWC. This was the one non-limited watch, but this is an anniversary watch. It's just a silver dial. That's the, but this is a, um, this is a Flieger style watch. Uh, the big, the big shock here, IWC is always pricey. It's got their in-house movement, but they, uh, it was a thousand dollar, nine hundred dollar difference to move from leather to bracelet. Fifty two fifty on leather, sixty one fifty on bracelet. That was really the shocking thing. I think we all agreed upon uh, out of it. 120 hour power reserve in-house movement though with these Mark 20s are pretty popular. Then we talked about the Seikos, which were our cheapest watches to discuss. $400 to $425, depending if you wanted the field or the dive watch. But of course it's Seiko, so it's limited, but it's not really limited because it was 6,500 units of the field watch. And then the the uh, more expensive one was 8,900 units. So I don't know, but... Um, if you love peanuts and don't like Timex, I guess this is an option for you. And then, of course, this uh, K-State watch, um, great bezel insert, no date finally, 
uh, still the caliber 400, which is an awesome movement, 10 year service interval, but 250 limited piece, but way expensive at $4,300. I just, I just don't know about it. Um, I wouldn't buy it. I would, uh, it's too much. It's too much money. But once they get this dial configuration, I want everything else the same other than it being purple and limited and 4,300. So basically I just want three changes. Like if this, if this looked like it was just a steel version of the silver Tudor, would I buy it? It would come down to the pricing. Because I do like the idea of the exotic, you know, weird idea of using silver as a case material. But I do like this dial configuration a lot. In fact, I like the handset on the on the Aquas better than I do the snowflakes. So, and I'm fine with snowflakes. Like some people hate snowflake hands. I, I'm okay with it. I, you know, I wore one for years, but, um, but I don't love it. So those are the main things. Now, that's interesting. So cashmere is a wool. Is it from a different creature? Uh, some of my sweaters were cashmere. I think a moth ate all those. I only ate the good stuff. I don't remember what type of ant. What type of animal does cashmere come from? It is a, a wool. I just don't, like, it's not a normal sheep, right? It's an exotic sheep that lived in, like, cashmere is a region, right? Like in Pakistan. Or is it in India? I think they fight over that. I think it's a conflict zone, or it used to be. Um. So DeRosa, welcome to the live stream. Uh, DeRosa uh, said, I played with some IWC renders. It looked great with a brown or blue strap, which, and that's a nice thing. We can always go and get additional straps. And DeRosa, I think, is the one who commented on my uh, recent yesterday review video uh, on the Longa and has suggested dressing it down, which I uh, was with a light brown strap, if I remember correctly, because I tried to make the, it was a very funny joke where I was like, you know, I think I can undo one more button if we go from black alligator to light brown leather, but I'm not. Maybe two buttons. Maybe we can lose the tie too. Um, in terms of you know trying to draw the problem with the longa is not the uh is not really the strap so much as the fact that uh it's gold. So it's kind of no, if I'd gotten like a platinum one, you know, was that stealth wealth or something, maybe a little easier. Um and as a reminder, it's also easy to support the channel for just 99 cents a month. So I dropped that link in the chat for those that are interested. You get some, uh, I said emotes again for my old MMO days. Um, no, emojis, it's emojis. You gotta be cool with them, social media people. Cashmere is great. I did like the, I did like my cashmere sweaters before they were moth consumed. And then I threw them away. But it was really light, which was nice. And Tuna tells me, okay, it's a goat. Kashmir is on the border of India and Pakistan. Yes, I once read something about that. It also, though spelled differently than the sweaters, is an excellent Led Zeppelin song. In fact, it is their best song, Kashmir. Not Stairway to Heaven. Who knew? I did, which is why I told you. It's a long song, but it's a lot of fun. Listen to it if you've never heard it. Just search for Kashmir Zeppelin. Um... I think that's it. I think that's it for the live stream. I'm going to go see the Spider Moose. Spider Moose. I'm going to see the Spider Verse movie today. I don't think they're going to give me the AP Royal Oak Concept Spider Man watch when I see it. But if they do, I will make a video about it. Uh, and I'm going to play pinball today. I have not competed much this year. Um, I did two weeks ago. And I did okay. I won my money back. I didn't do great. But um, I'm going to go to the, uh, the 403 Club in Kansas City, Kansas. That's where, like, the hardcore competitive people play. So I expect to get destroyed. However, there's an excellent restaurant in KCK called Amberguesas Los Compas. They make, like, it's a, it's a Mexican restaurant, as the name would suggest. And if you know Spanish, Amberguesas is hamburgers. They actually have incredible hamburgers. But I don't know if I will get hamburgers or fajitas because they do really good fajitas. And they do good street tacos. And they have French fries. Whatever I do, there will be French fries with it. I yeah, and yes, I will get French fries with fajitas. I I see. I don't play by I I don't play by anyone's rules but my own. We're gonna be putting a NATO strap on that longa, and we're gonna get French fries with our fajitas, and it's gonna be awesome. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, nobody in pinball likes that song. It's a great song actually, but the it's so overplayed. Like, <laughs> uh, so it's like a it's like a it's like here in Kansas, where we often will roll our eyes at all the Wizard of Oz references. 
uh, which I will tell a quick story about that. And oh, hey, Ken, I see you you tuned in right at the end, uh, but that's okay. You can always watch the video. Um, when I went to, as I, I noted earlier, when we were joking about uh, Oris and its purple K State watch, when I moved to um, uh, New York for a year, because I got my, my that's why I went to Syracuse to get my graduate degree. I um, like the first week I was there uh, because I still was a Kansas resident. Uh, so my license plate on my car was Kansas. I was pulled up at some drive through and I was pulling in and some guy behind me uh, just rolled down his window and yelled at me. There's no place like home. Which is a Wizard of Oz reference. It was weird. It was surreal. Yes, a camo NATO. I actually don't have any camo NATO. I don't know if I can pull that. I oh, know I can pull anything off if I want. You just got to rock it. I've asked about Tommy before. There actually is a Tommy pinball machine made by Data East, which uh, doesn't exist anymore. It, it became Sega Pinball, which then became Stern Pinball, which is the largest pinball manufacturer in existence today. Uh, pretty good game. It had blinders that would come out. They called them blinders that would cover your ball so you could be blind. It covered the ball at the flipper part. Um, but, um, I've never, they're often broken. I've never activated the blinders. Oh yes. Not, I, I never made it to New York city either. When I was in uh, Syracuse, it was about five hour trip. I think people told me, but I had no money. All my money was, uh, was going to school. So it was like, cause I, uh, my degree is in public administration. I should have been a lawyer, but I do like what I do, but I could have done that with a law degree too. Red sailcloth on the longa. Yeah, the uh, the only problem is the this is the 22 uh, millimeter. It's my only red sailcloth. But um, I could, uh, Barton does all sorts of sizes. I could do it. I could at least do a Barton one. But um, that's it. That's it for the live stream. You all have a really good weekend and I will talk to you all on the next one. Take care, everybody.